Hi everyone, welcome. Um, this week we're going to talk about menopause because it's a question that came up. Menopause in ancient wisdom was not considered a bad time for women like we do in the West. So women usually in the West see it as a, as a kind of painful time, hot flushes, so it's kind of like the most annoying time for women. They feel like they're losing their youth and um, all those things. So it's kind of a difficult time uh, for women in the West. And I just wanted to bring some, shed some beautiful light on what menopause can be as an empowering stage for women's life. In Chinese medicine, they say that when a woman is starting her menopause, she's supposed to slow down and smell the flowers. Okay, so in the West, we still... Even though, so basically from the age of 35, you already premenopausal. So you produce less progesterone after the age, from the age of 35. So you slowly, slowly, the progesterone level decline. And progesterone is the hormones that gives us libido. Um, it helps us with metabolism, also um, giving us more energy. And we can s deal with stress much better. Hello, everyone. Thank you for that. So, um, so when we are starting the menopause, and especially when we kind of more kind of towards the age of 40, 45, and we start to experience it more, maybe we start to feel hot flushes, maybe we struggle with losing weight and all those things. Um, so this is the time that a woman is, your body's changing. It's just part of the game. Hi, Linda. So um, you just need to accept that that this is a time actually of priestesshood in other cultures. So in the yogic tradition, they call it the forest dweller. So when you finish your uh, householding stage, so you raise the kids, you done your work within the world, now you're free to go into the inner forest. The time for you to really honor um, your silence, you're slowing down, and you need to be more quiet. This is really what menopause means. And it's kind of, I find it really interesting that in the menopause there's hot flushes, which is very similar symptoms to kundalini awakening. When the kundalini starts to move in your body, you start to feel more heat in the body. So that's quite interesting. Okay, I'm not going to go too much into the esoteric things, but there is a lot of esoteric knowledge out there, and I'd be more than happy to share. So, menopause is a time for a woman to really honor that she finished her role of being the pretty princess that making everybody's life easier. And it's your time to take care of yourself and your own needs and go into the inner forest. And after you finish with the forest dweller, which is around 60, then you move into sannyasan, which is the ascetic stage, which you marry in God in a way, if you want. So that's kind of interesting, different view. Uh, I also heard in some shamanic traditions that, you know, to be a shaman or to be a medicine woman, you need to go through a really tough initiation. But when a woman going through finish her menopause it's she she's already initiated into a medicine woman so she doesn't have to go through the very harsh training to be a medicine woman she's already initiated by her body by the process of the menopause so look at it as a beautiful initiation into a new stage in your life a stage of wisdom uh, the wisdom holder wisdom keeper um Okay, the second thing I wanted to talk about is herbs. Everybody need to use herbs in their menopause, especially in the West. I highly, highly recommend it. So find yourself a local herbalist that specializes in women's hormones. Uh, it can be Chinese, it can be Western, it can, it can combine acupuncture, that would be really amazing. Uh, but really kind of starting to prepare and support the body in that transit. So there is wild yam, there is um, vitex, which I think is phenomenal herb for women. Um, so there are many, many herbs. In Ayurveda, there is a beautiful herb called ashwagandha. And um, shatavari, actually, is one of the most beautiful women herbs. 
Shatavari is actually the translation is the women the woman who can deal with thousand men. Which I think it's quite sweet. So it's actually coming from the asparagus family. It's very gentle. It's a tonic. So th start to think about it. it's your yin time. It's your feminine time. It's time to slow down, to smell the flowers, enjoy beauty, be more creative, go in and take herbs that support that process, that support the... Um, it's very much connected to the pituitary gland. So, so Vitex is directly working on the pituitary gland. So things like that. So there is also poses in yoga that you can stimulate the pituitary gland, which is the master of all glands. It's the gland that regulates all the glands in the body. And it's in, in, in the center of your brain. So, um, so starting to work with that, that could be a really amazing thing. Um, there is uh, different kriyas, there's different meditation to work uh, with the pituitary gland. The third thing I want to talk about is food. So you want food that's high in serotonin because you're going through a stage. I find it really disturbing that women treated uh, a, in their menopause stage uh, as if it's, a, it's an illness, a mental illness. Uh, I think every third woman or fourth woman in the west is being treated with antidepressant for this stage for the menopause it's not a depression though if you think about depression as a deep rest when you're depressed you need a deep rest then maybe you are depressed because you need you you are aligning yourself with needing to really drop and really rest and dwell in your own inner forest okay so, um, food high in serotonin, so the sun can give you that also. So you need half an hour completely naked in the sun to, to, um, to absorb sufficient amount of vitamin D. But actually the sun giving us like hundreds of vitamins that we don't even have names to. So the sun is the force of life, it's prana, it's the only thing that keeps this planet alive. So um, it's not bad for you. It's just midday. If you are very fair skin, then don't sit in the middle of the day in, in the sun. Do early morning sun and evening sun and try to be completely naked. And if you can't, at least let your belly show. So get some sun on your belly. And this part of your arms is where you absorb most vitamin D. So that's very important for the bone health and serotonin levels. And then this hot... Like any initiation, because we don't have in our society the elder women that will take us through the process of shifting into that stage of the menopause, then we're feeling a bit lost because we are going through a huge initiation, but there's nobody holding or guiding us there. And mostly we're hearing that it's a horrible stage in our lives and we're losing our youth and we're losing our beauty as if it's a, it's a curse. We, we're losing the youth and we're moving into wisdom. It's just how it is. We can't resist it. We just need to honor it. And actually, it's needed that we honor it because the next generations of girls need that wisdom and need that kind of grounding feminine roles in their lives that will inspire them towards that stage. So at least if we didn't have it, we can do it for the next generations of girls. And this is something we could um, use to encourage us to really um, welcome that stage of the menopause um, as a stage into priestesshood, as I said, but really as a as a wisdom keeper, as a um, holder of, um, yeah, mature feminine. Um, so with food, I would just say, I always say it on the retreats, everybody say something else. So I don't like to talk about nutrition as this is the way, it's black and white. But I say to people, if you know that at least 60-70% of your diet is, is vegetables and it's organic, you, can, you are safe. And, and all the colours of the vegetables, so you know that you have kind of a rainbow cuisine, so you, don't, you know that you get all the nutrients. If you grow your own vegetables, or at least you're getting a box scheme, so you're getting a local food, so then you at least tune with the rhythms of nature and the seasons, so then you know you're getting the right nutrients for the right time of the year. So that is really good. And then you've got 30-40% um, protein. A lot of vegetables anyway have carbohydrates, so you don't need to worry so much about carbohydrate. What I did find in many, many research 
is that gluten and sugar are very difficult to break uh, for women, especially after menopause. Again, because the progesterone is dropping and our metabolism is not as strong as when we were 22. That's just how it is. So just honoring that and changing our diet and growing our vegetables. And actually growing your vegetable is really phenomenally powerful way to reconnect with the feminine because you are working with the earth and you aligning yourself with that energy of being grounded and being feminine because the feminine is the earth's energy. Um, the last thing I wanted to, um, to say is a detox. I think detox is really important. Liver detox is really important for the menopause. Um, I was just in a conference, I read a conference, and, and one of the doctors said, with any patient, if you don't know where to start, start with the liver. Okay, because the liver is like is, is doing so many functions and it's detoxifying quite, you know, it, it's the main filter of the body and it, and it filters uh, old hormones. So when there is stagnation in the liver, there is, there is problems with our hormones. So the, the stage of the menopause can feel very overwhelming. Definitely contemplate liver um, flush and uh, live some sort of a detox um, and be more than happy to help with that. This is kind of my speciality. Um, and, but also just thinking about gentle way to detoxify, to de detoxify. Don't go harsh. It's a yin time. It's not a yang time. Harsh green juicing, fasting is very masculine. You want, and I'm talking about in a yin and yang kind of way, not men and women. Um, so try to do like gentle cleanses. There is a cleanse next week. And I have a cleanses in October and uh, September, October. And then I'm also doing kind of online and I'm also doing this kind of new sending home boxes with um, kind of kits for detox and cleanses if you'd be interested in that. A lot, yin food is, is roots and think about it like it's rooting us. So a lot of orange vegetables, root vegetables are very grounding and this is a time to ground yourself so you can choose cleanses that incorporate that rather than going really harsh on uh you know like i do not recommend liver flush i did it myself many times uh not many times maybe three four times it's a it can be very powerful but it really needs to be supervised Honestly, otherwise you really could really damage yourself. So be really careful with all this kind of sexy new detox processes. And this is why I really like Ayurveda, you know, and Chinese medicine. They've been around for 5,000 years. It's been tested by time, you know, and it's, it's not this kind of new model thing, writing something sexy and, and we're all going for it, right? So it's like really taking, um, and I'm sorry, I don't want to sound judgmental in any way, but I'm just, um, yeah, it's just, we need to kind of trust the ancient wisdom when we're doing um, those kind of invasive processes, okay? So just be really careful with your body. And it is a time to slow down and smell the flowers. It's a time to go in to the inner forest. So please listen to your body. And this is your time to really honor intuition and to really start to learn to work with your inner wisdom and to reclaim the priestess, the medicine woman within you because the next generations of girls need you.